Hello everyone, welcome to Teaching Brainiacs. This is part two of the series for the state exam prep. If you missed the first one, click here or there. So when it comes to the state exams, what's going to happen is that you're going to have two days to take the test. The first thing that's the most important is to make sure that you're nice and calm. Try to have a good sleep because I know sometimes you get nervous and we don't want to sleep. And the next thing is to keep an eye out for something called a reference sheet. And the reference sheet is where it has the L times W. It has all these other conversions for you from millimeters to yards to miles. Most importantly, do your best. In this part, we're talking about volume. And if we see here, volume is length, which stands for L, width, that stands for W and H, which is height. So the way to calculate volume is length times width times height, all right? So if you don't already know, this is the shape and it is a rectangular prism, all right? And these are the sides that we just discussed. So in this case, the five would stand for the length, the three would be the width, and the nine would be the height. So when it says times, we have to multiply those numbers. And in the state exam, you will see V equals LWH. So now you know what that stands for. If we did this, it's five times three. Five times three equals 15. All right. And now we're not done yet because now we have to multiply by nine. So when we multiply by nine, nine times five is 45 and 9 times 1 is 9 and if we add 4 to that well 9 10 11 12 13 so now this is our answer and I'm focusing on the year 2021 in case I didn't mention it so here let's see what the question says right and we have our little reference right because you're gonna have your little reference sheet that we talked about earlier which is V equals length times width times height so it says, what is the volume in cubic feet of the rectangular prism? Now, if you get so scared, you don't remember anything, let's, let's see what we know. We know for sure the volume is here, and this is what that is, right? Do we don't even know what cubic feet? Don't worry about it, it's fine. But what is rectangular prism? Well, that's this shape. So those are the top two things we need to know. We just need to know that we need to find the value, and that is a rectangular prism length width height right so we have one two three four so look at that we have number four now we have one two three number three and then the height is one two three four five six height is six so now the next part is what well we have to do four times three times uh six when we do four times three is twelve times six Remember that we're not done when we multiply just these two. We have to multiply three numbers, right? So in this case, it's 12 times 6. And then what happens? 12 times 6. Well, let's put this to the side, right? Now we have 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 1 is 6. Plus one more is 7. All right. So in this case, as soon as you see this, I want you to remember rectangular prism. Rectangular prism. Remember that, okay? A lot of times they have questions like this. They throw in a lot of big words and a lot of times when we're getting nervous, sometimes we forget what words mean. So what I want you to do is just take it nice and slow, breathe in, breathe out, and read it. Definitions to go boop, all right? So which expression cannot? So that means that we have to find the answer that is not, right? Be you to determine, well, I don't remember what determine means. Well, let's skip over that and let's keep reading it and see how we could figure out what this means. This is real situations where sometimes you'll forget definitions, all right? Then volume of the rectangular prism. Well, ding, 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 ding. I remember a rectangular prism and that's this shape, right? And volume means what? Well, length times width times height. So guess what? Now with this one, it may mean that I need to know which of these will not help me get the value? Remember, it's the opposite. That always is very tricky. If we count this, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we know we have six here, which is, again, the length. So I'll put that in a circle. We have one, two, three, which is the width. 
one, two, three, four. So four, and then I'll put the H in a circle. So now we know that it's length times width times height. So there's many ways you could go about this. You could either go section by section, or you could find out what the volume is and then go that way. So if I do length times width times height, because that's what our, remember our reference sheet told us to do, because that's what volume is, if for whatever reason you forget, well guess what, the length is six, the width is three, and the height is four. So if we did that, well guess what? Six times three is 18 times four. Well if we do 18 times four, that would be what? Eight, 16, 24, 32. Four times one is four, plus three is seven. So we have 72. So far, you're not gonna see any of that there, right? Because guess what? They want us to play around with numbers, right? But if you look at this part, right? Don't you see that this is in the answer? I see it right here. So that means that this one would be one that would help you get the volume. So that means that it, it won't be the answer for this problem. Because remember, the cannot. Right? So in that case, B won't be it, right? Uh, that would be no. Now let's see. Well, we have here, we have four, uh, six times three times four. Well, that definitely giving us the volume because that's what we have here, right? So that can be the answer. Well, this is where they kind of tricked you out. Why? Because what they did is they rearranged this, right? So let's say we decided to do three times four times six. Well, guess what happens? If we do three times four, that's 12 times six. And I don't know about you, but I see that there. And if we did 12 times six, well, let's see if it gives us the 72. Six times two, 12. Six times one is six, plus one is seven. So there we go. So guess what? Now that one does it. If you just looked at letter D, or just looked at all the answers, and figured out, wait, there is no other six here then that has to be it all right that's another the shortened version of it and this is the longer version so I want to show both ways every child is different everyone learns differently so that's why I go through the process of doing it the longer way and then like I said if you find this one you'll say oh well that can't be it because there's no extra six here total volume let's talk about it this means the volume of this whole shape so this little piece and that little piece all together is a total value. That's what you need to remember. But let's see the question that they'll ask you. It says, what is the total value in cubic inches? Like I said, if you get scared with all these extra things, let's leave that out for a quick second. Of the tower Priscilla built. Now I use my name to change some stuff up. But anyway, so let's say I like to label things because it makes it easier. So if I have this as shape A and shape B. The best way that I like to teach it and explain this is that we separate these two boxes. So let's say we didn't have this piece, right? Let's say we didn't have this. Well, if we had to find the volume of that, it would be five times two times four. And then we can label this shape A. Well, let's see what that equals, right? <clears throat> five times two is 10 times four equals what? 40. Now, the value for shape B, well, we have 10 times 2 times 4, right? 10 times 2 is 20 times 4 equals 80. Now, the next part, we found the volume, but now in order to find the total volume, now this is where you have to remember, you have to add shape A equals 40 plus 80 from shape B, 40 plus 80 equals 120. And guess what? Boom, right there, D. Always to make sure and double, triple check the correct answers, and if you put them on your test correctly. That's happened to me numerous times that I thought I put a C and I put a B. So I just want you to remember that when you're doing these multiple choice questions, make sure that if you meant to put D, that you did not put B. If you have any questions, suggestions, or anything that you would like to add to the community, feel free to leave a comment, share, and subscribe. Teaching Brainiacs motto is feeding the minds of tomorrow. And that includes our moms and dads and 
family members who need to help our children succeed. So until then, see you next time. Bye.